Good afternoon. Please be seated and remember to turn off your cell phones and mobile devices. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. I'm Barbara Bush, Chair of the Faculty Senate, and I represent the Faculty Senate Officers, Sherry Broyles, Vice Chair, Srinivasan Srivili Puta, Secretary, our Executive Committee, and Senators. As their representative, I am honored to help celebrate the 2016 State of the University. We are joined today on this momentous occasion by distinguished guests and members of the UNT system and UNT leadership. Please hold your applause until all have been recognized. Joining us today are Eric Wythe, who is here on behalf of the U.S. Congressman and UNT alumnus Michael Burgess. Brianne Jackson, here on behalf of State Senator Jane Nelson. Denton County Judge Mary Horn and members of the Denton County Commissioner's Court. Members of the Denton City Council. Denton ISD Superintendent Jamie Wilson. Members of our Denton Chambers and the Denton Economic Development Partnership. Our distinguished guests include some of our biggest supporters. Members of our President's Leadership Board, including Jim McNatt, Ken Newman, Kristen Farmer, C. Dan Smith, who is also a former chair of the UNT System Board of Regents, and is the current chair of the UNT Foundation Board. Members of our Founder Circle, members of the UNT Foundation Board, members of the UNT Alumni Association Board. Now please welcome our UNT System representatives, UNT System Board Regents Vice Chair and alumnus Donald Potts, and student regent Chris Lee, our former members of the boards of regents who are in attendance today, Chancellor Lee Jackson and vice chancellors. We also want to welcome other members of the UNT system administration and representatives from our sister institutions. Lastly, I would like to acknowledge members of UNT's leadership who are present today, the president's cabinet, deans, my fellow members of the Faculty Senate, Staff Senate Chair Christy Heston, and members of Staff Senate Leadership, Graduate Student Council President Seth Ketron, as well as other members of the Graduate Student Council Leadership, Student Government Association President Grant Hale, and Vice President Barrett Cole, as well as other members of the SGA Leadership. Thank you all for joining us. Today we celebrate our 2016 State of the University and our 126th year as an institution. We have many milestones to celebrate. Most notably, we are now a Carnegie ranked top tier or tier one research university. As many of you know, this achievement is the culmination of a long-held vision and much collective hard work. We should all be a proud of what this recognition says about the quality of our institution, the quality of our faculty, staff, students, and alumni, and the quality of our teaching, scholarship, and creative activity, research, and service. However, as you will hear from President Smatras, this is not the end of our journey. We must continue to work together as a community focused on our core mission of helping our students do well in college, graduate, and build meaningful lives and careers. This is what drives our success. This is the most fulfilling part of our work. Today, President Smatras will share with you what we have accomplished in the past few years and how we move forward as a team united by a shared purpose. Please join me in welcoming President Neil Smatras to the stage. Thank you, Barbara, and it's a pleasure to work with our faculty senate as partners in making this a better university. Well, welcome. 
What a beautiful September day we have. The students are back in school. The campus is alive and hustling. We even won our first football game last weekend. And I'm ever so thankful that I can be sharing this with hundreds of our friends, supporters, and people who I've come to know over the last few years. Debbie and I are delighted to be here and delighted to share the progress of our university with you. Well, we have a lot to talk about today and a lot to review. I'm going to take a slightly different approach this year. Instead of just talking about one year's progress, and we have made significant progress in the past year, I want to put this in a bit of a perspective. So we're looking at the last two and a half years, about the time I've been here, uh, benchmarking ourselves against our performance in the fall of 2014, and then looking forward and beyond to see how we're doing. We're going to cover what we've done, a few highlights from last year. We'll benchmark ourselves and talk about our greatest challenges, our goals for the next five years, interestingly enough, some of which we've already surpassed, our plans for 17, and some initiatives from the planning workshop that we recently held. Now, I have a number of fairly dense slides talking about the kinds of things that got done. You'll be able to grab these on your way out the door with a little cheat sheet that we'll provide with everybody, but I'm going to hit some of the highlights here of what we've done. Let's start with some of our infrastructure. First, you know that when we got here, we had some fiscal challenges, and I'm going to stop talking about them reasonably soon, but what I'm proud to say right now is that our revenue growth has been exceptional over the past few years. We're out of the woods and we're building our reserves. We completed a capital campaign. We have new financial management software. In fact, we've restored all of our IT bones and the foundation to go from worst to first in many important areas. And I'll, I'll fill you in on some of those in just a bit. We also have completed a number of important projects, Rollins Hall, the new student union, capital projects, and very important to our faculty, we've been progressively increasing merit and equity uh, salary adjustments for faculty, staff, uh, and administration when needed. And when we do this, we started with 1% in 14, we were a little pinched, 2% last year, 3% this upcoming year, and I believe you'll see that we'll be able to retain the best and brightest who come to the university. Our academics have also been very, very strong. We broke enrollment records now, two years in a row, and we've welcomed our largest freshman classes two years in a row. We grew our summer enrollments, and this is important because you need to expand the use of this campus out over time and make sure that we're using summer as a third semester. When you do that, our students graduate faster uh, and they get to the job market quicker and they manage their debts better. So we're expanding out our use of summer. We also have done a lot to make sure that we're serving our students. We have mandatory one-week advising for freshmen. We have uh, three-point advising in their freshman year, which is a whole lot better than it was optional prior to this, and that means they get off on the right foot and they get moving a little bit faster. We've improved and increased dramatically the number of scholarships that we hand out, and we've handed out our financial aid packages in a much more timely fashion and much earlier in the year so that students can make smart choices about what they're going to do in the following year. And I have to say, this is due in large measure to Vice President Shannon Goodman and his team who've done amazing things, and Elizabeth who has, uh, with our VP for Student Affairs, who has really worked hard on the orientation and building spirit and camaraderie in our entering classes. So I think that's worth a big round of applause for their achievements. All of that combined has caused the University of North Texas to be ranked as one of the most affordable universities in the country in several recent uh, very objectively done articles and that 
you might say, well, that just means you're inexpensive. No, it puts us in great company. Yale, Stanford, Princeton, a number of other major institutions. We are ranked as affordable and providing a great and quality education for students and their parents who are too wealthy to afford deep financial federal aid and too rich to get a break. So this is a really important observation, and I want to say it's one of the things that brings students to us. We're working hard on behalf of our students. We also have launched a number of exciting new programs, the Eagle Express, which helps students to graduate faster, and if they do well, discounts their last semester. Our Eagle Advantage plan, admitting the top 20 students uh, automatically from high schools that enroll in it, and we've now got over uh, 15 or 16 high schools, and it's growing. And the Oklahoma tuition plan, it's about time we started bringing folks from Oklahoma to Texas as opposed to sending them up there to play football. So uh, we're going to be pulling more and more uh, from the state of Oklahoma, and I think you're going to see that we're offering a very competitive uh, program for those students. Other academic highlights. Uh, this year, we have increased our total National Merit Scholars to 32, uh, adding 11 more National Merit Scholars, and uh, the premium and the sweet stakes competing for these students is huge, and we're doing really well in competing for them on a national level. Here's a great one. We have given out, we have received more students getting Goldwater Award winners, uh, being Goldwater Award winners than any other school in Texas. In fact, four of our students last year received Goldwater Awards. There's about 200 given out nationwide. This is an incredible accolade, and four is the maximum number you can get. This places us in very good company, and in fact, we have given out more Goldwater Awards, uh, enough Goldwater Awards, to put us in the top 20 nationwide. This tells you the commitment our faculty have to mentoring and working with their students and helping them to succeed. We have launched a new college in Frisco. We've brought up our academic budget by about $41 million in the past two years. We had a great reaccreditation visit. We look forward to getting our final seal of approval next December. We celebrated our 125th anniversary, and oh, by the way, we brought in a couple new deans, and I'm sure you're going to be delighted to interact with them. Uh, John Richmond is our new dean of music, and if you were wandering by the halls, you probably heard our symphonic band practicing. They're going to be heading to Cuba here in the near future uh, for a historic occasion, being one of the first universities in the country to interact with students from the Institute of Music there, and this is a real feather in our cap. And we're also very proud to welcome Kinchuk in, who is our Dean of the College of Information. And here's an interesting fact to take home. Our College of Information has more doctoral students per faculty member than any other college in this university. They're doing great work and they're highly ranked. We also have been working on our research and reputation. You've heard uh, from Barbara that we have become Carnegie Tier 1. I'm not putting the mission accomplished sign up on the back of the aircraft carrier. We're going to continue to push to more deeply entrench ourselves in Tier 1, as you'll see in a moment. We've been working on our science research building uh, under Vice President Tom McCoy's leadership. We've launched an office of uh, innovation and commercialization to increase patents and technology transfer, and I have high hopes for this uh, in, uh, in partnership with expanding uh, what used to be called Sack and Save and is now going to be called the Collab Lab, which will be a center for student entrepreneurship and innovation as well as faculty gathering spots. I think we're going to do some really good things in this in the near future. We have 62 academic programs ranked in the top 100. Now this number threw me because the last time I looked, we had 47. And then the new lists came out, and we updated our lists, and it's a little embarrassing because one of the goals I'm going to show you later said we're going to audaciously set a bold goal to go from 47 to 57 nationally ranked programs in the top 100, and now we're at 62. So I'm looking at the chancellor, and I suspect he's going to make me revise this goal. <laughs> Upwards, yes, not downwards. Uh, we've invested a lot in our graduate student programs. You'll see why that's important momentarily. We built four new research institutes of excellence under 
Dr. McCoy's leadership. This is a big deal. And I want to just give you a couple highlights. One of those is called the Bow Discovery Institute. There's at least four different departments interacting in this venture. It is bringing in, uh, it has a National Academy scientist as the leader of it. It's got some of our most potent uh, science research faculty in it. They're dedicated to finding new products in plant science and in animal science. But just this week, if you've been watching the news, you may have heard of University of North Texas scientists having a breakthrough discovery in the fight against breast cancer. Dr. Ron Mittler has found a protein and the regulation of this protein can make tumors, breast tumors grow larger or completely stop them in their tracks. This could be a watershed moment, and it's coming to you as a result of the efforts of UNT and the Biodiscovery Institute. This is great news, and this is the kind of thing we're looking for even more as time goes on. We established, uh, we brought in 14 high-impact research hires, people who are bringing in uh, or have grants in hand of about a million dollars, and we plan on trying to keep the pressure growing in this arena because this is how we're going to move ahead. We have improved our customer service for grants and contracts because when you slow up grants and contracts, well, everything grinds to a halt. And again, congratulations to Dr. McCoy, Brett, and his staff uh, for doing that. We've reorganized advancement alumni uh, divisions, and you'll see later that we've expanded our access to the Texas Research Incentive Program, and I'll give you the specific numbers on that in a moment. So, how do things look when we're going into this year? Well, I think they look pretty darn good. Uh, first, our fall enrollment, get ready, 37,973. 27 shy of 38,000. Now, if any of you... <laughs> if any of you feel like enrolling right now, we could use a few extra students so that we hit the millennium mark, but maybe next year we'll blow by 38,000 and hit 39,000 on our way to the growth that we believe is important to sustain this region. We also have 300 students in our new college in Frisco. We project that our budget this year will increase by about $51 million. Again, our financial health is strong, and that's going to be the cornerstone that allows us to bring in new faculty, bring in new research, and really grow as a prominent institution. We grew our academic budget by adding 81 new faculty positions, and you'll see later they were sorely needed after two years of lower budgets. This is also one of the most talented and diverse groups of faculty that we've ever brought in. I think you can look for leadership in years to come from this group. We have about 30 major capital projects in process, we're about to hit minority serving institution status. We should hit it next year. We've committed the University of North Texas to not just being tier one academically, but to having tier one athletic programs under the leadership of our new vice president for athletics and athletic director, Ren Baker. Uh, Ren, thank you. Wave to the crowd so they get to see you. We've locked in a deal to help promote ourselves and work with one of the most potent organizations in the world, uh, the Dallas Cowboys. We are the exclusive higher education partner with them. And if you've been watching preseason, you've probably seen UNT all over the place. That will continue on as we are on Spanish and English radio broadcasts, television broadcasts, their websites, and a host of other venues, which we hope will bring us national exposure and build our national enrollment. We're also beginning a new building for uh, the College of Visual Arts and Design. I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but that college is ranked first in the Southwest, fifth for publics in the country in design, and it's really going places with this new facility, which I think you're going to find is beautiful. So, let's see the highlight reel. In 1890, the University of North Texas started with humble roots, but grand ambitions. We've transformed ourselves from a teacher's training school into one of the nation's largest universities. It's remarkable how much we achieved in our history. We've grown bigger and better than we've ever been. 
With record enrollments and plans that set us firmly on the path to excellence, we've risen to the top ranks of research universities. One of only 115 in the nation ranked in the Carnegie Classification's top tier. We've launched initiatives that will create the UNT of tomorrow. New research institutes that are a pipeline to bring our know-how to the marketplace. A new location in Frisco that brings the power of UNT to one of the nation's fastest growing areas. New buildings that give students more places to learn, bond, and grow. We found new ways to unleash the greatness of our students, faculty, and staff. We're growing our reputation through partnerships and initiatives that showcase UNT as a top university full of creativity, excellence, and pride. And we have started a new era in athletics. As a graduation leader, we graduate more than 8,500 students each year, armed with the knowledge and power to be change agents and leaders. They join a network of 393,000 alumni whose connections to UNT and to each other grow stronger every day. These milestones build on a mission that started in 1890, a mission for UNT to create leaders and to be a leader. It's a mission we fulfill every day in every way. Today, we hold our heads high as a top-tier research university with many top-ranked programs and distinctions that puts UNT among the very best. Our future has never been brighter. The best is yet to come. I hope you're not applauding because you think the talk's over. Um, I love that video. Uh, it really captures, I think, in a very short period of time, some of the great forward progress that we've made. So we had a great year. And we have many reasons to celebrate. So why aren't we comfortable? Well, let's take a look. As we were elevated to Carnegie Tier 1 status, we joined a different group of peers. It's kind of like we moved from Conference USA to the Big 12. And in that, we have to now compare ourselves to some much tougher competition. Our new peers include other Texas universities that moved up into Carnegie rankings with us, Texas Tech, Houston, UT Arlington, similar universities, no medical school, fairly large enrollment, Publix, uh, University of Oklahoma, George Mason, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and then we have a series of schools that we would like to be more like because they're higher rated into the tier one rankings and well known nationally. UC Santa Barbara, Arizona State, and a recent miracle, Georgia State, who've done remarkably well as they consolidated through the Georgia System Board of Regents uh, recent actions. Uh, these are all up and coming and institutions that we'll be proud to be in the same groups with. But where do we stand compared to these institutions? I'm going to go through these fairly quickly and I want to start by saying in many of the measures we compare favorably. But I'm going to focus on a few measures where I believe we need to close the gaps. The first is retention. Our retention compares favorably to Texas institutions, but we're lower than our national peers and our aspirants. Our six-year graduation rates compare favorably to Texas, but we're lower than our peers and our aspirants. Now, I want to point out that this data, which is from national sources called IPEDS, and that's inside baseball, is about three years old. It's from the FY14 year, so it includes FY13 and 14. So we're now comparing ourselves uh, to our old data compared to their old data three years ago. So we're going to have to see how we've done since that time. We also can take a look at a very important Carnegie factor, which is our graduate population and our doctoral student production. We're not bad in terms of our overall graduate population, but our doctoral production is low and we need to increase it because doctoral production is one of the foundations of academic reputation. As we send our students out to take positions in other institutions, we need to up our game in doctoral production. We also very much need to improve our research output and our gifts. You can see that the little green bars, UNT, don't compare too favorably to our aspirants or our peers in either gifts or grants, and we need to double and then perhaps redouble our output in these critical areas over the next decade. And it's going to be a, a tough haul 
but we're dedicated to get it done and we're going to be focused on that mission. If you take a look at total revenues, this will tell part of the story. Our revenues as of this year, as of FY14, were lower than anybody else on the board. And if you add the research output and the gifting output, you'll see the difference in total revenues between us and the other institutions, just captured by those two variables. So that's why I say we really have to increase our research output and we really have to increase our gifts. You'll also see that there's a direct impact of that in terms of number of faculty that we employ. Tenure, tenure track faculty are the lifeblood of reputation and success at a university, and we need to increase our number to become competitive. In fact, we're about 200 behind the institutions we would most like to become. So we face two major challenges. The first challenge that we face is that we need to do better at telling our story about how we add value to our students' education. We need to improve their success here and make sure that they can secure great jobs when they graduate. This is something all of us in the UNT system are committed to, and here at UNT, we're doing something about it, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But there's another challenge buried within this one. In our nation, graduating high school classes are in decline. In 45 states in the country, the high school graduating classes are shrinking. They're not here in Texas yet, but by 2024 they will be. And the number of college qualified students is leveling out right now. So that means the competition for students is becoming fierce. And you can see the sequelae of that when you look at the ITTs of the world closing and other institutions that are private for-profits struggling and even a number of private institutions that can no longer attract students because of the decline in the high school graduating classes. This is an existential threat. What we need to do is to make sure we're competing well because North Texas is now one of the preferred recruiting grounds for every major institution in this country. We are facing severe competition. We have to outperform. We have to tell our story and we have to make sure that students think of us first because we have added more value to their education. And that is going to be something that we have to dedicate ourselves to. The second major challenge we face is firmly embedding ourselves in the Carnegie Tier 1 rankings by improving our research output and our reputation. And so we need to now take a little look at the suggestions our faculty have had for how we're going to provide a more nimble culture that doesn't make incremental change, but that can think through to solving these major challenges for us in a very short period of time. We have about three or four years before the next Carnegie rankings. So let's see some of the ideas that our faculty, staff, students, and administration have come up with and some of their enthusiasm for developing a new way to run this university. We can make our students' dream come true by being there for them. Ever since the moment they step into the university, we want to befriend them and we want to find out what their dreams are and helping them. We're ready. We're here. I think it's important that we guide them to dreams they didn't know they had, to help them discover the value of study abroad, to help them discover the value of internships in the community, to help build the bridges to success beyond the academy. We can make our students' dreams come true by creating an atmosphere of teamwork across campus. We can make students' dreams come true by fostering an educational environment where tomorrow's leaders, discoverers, innovators, and creators can soar. I believe we can help make our students' dreams come true when we help them realize their talents and then help them develop them so they can go from good to great. I think once students realize their talents, there's nothing they can't overcome or anything they can't accomplish. Athletics can help students' dreams at North Texas come true uh, by being the front porch of the university, uh, by advancing the mission and integrity of the institution, by providing athletic programs that are competitively excellent and academically excellent. I think to build a culture of innovation and a shared purpose, we need to realize that we're here at UNT with one purpose in mind, and that is our students. 
We're here to help our students, ultimately. Bringing projects that allow students to collaborate and students to show their expertise as much as the faculty does. Um, and bringing opportunities where students actually see the sense of purpose, see the sense of ownership, then we will be able to provide that shared vision, shared purpose. In order to build that culture of innovation, it's incredibly important that we go after the best and the brightest. Uh, when I say the best and the brightest, that includes faculty, staff, and students. And we also have a responsibility to help develop and invest in the talent folks that we recruit to UNT. We can build a culture of innovation by deliberately planning working, managing, and talking amongst ourselves to develop new programs and ideas across the university. And I think it's great for faculty to give students space in the classroom that's not tied to an assessment where they can just talk through ideas and feel free to share ideas and collaborate and I think that's where true innovation comes from. We're going to build a culture of innovation by better communicating amongst departments and being open to trying new things and being creative. For many years now, I guess since the beginning of the university, we've been very student-centered. And so that's really a strength that uh, UNT brings to the table. We have faculty, staff, students, administrators on this campus. And when everyone accepts their responsibilities and their roles and the way they can contribute to the university, that presents us with a shared purpose. So innovation results when you create a positive atmosphere that fosters solutions. And at the University of North Texas, the faculty and staff are motivated to create that environment for themselves and their students. We can build a culture of innovation by empowering everyone to be innovators at UNT at all levels and in all areas of our organization. from our last planning workshop and you can see that they're squarely focused on the task of helping us to have the most innovative higher education culture of any school in the country. I think this is going to be key to us moving forward and I want to thank them. Their spirit uh, and the enthusiasm that they had for this is enormous and we can't get there without everybody pulling in the same direction. So if we're going to get there though, we must learn how to move faster and execute better so that we can reach our goals. And again, I said, our flight path for this is about three to four years. We have to make significant progress for in just in time for the next Carnegie rankings. So what are those goals? Well, we have a series of goals that we have presented to our board and discussed with our regents. And I think, in general, they're fairly audacious, except maybe for this top one. We committed to improving the number of top academic, top 100 academic programs from 47 to 57. Um, Chancellor, I wanna wonder if the, the bonus clause of my contract can now kick in, uh, because, oh no, we're gonna increase it even higher, okay. So, we, we do need to, uh, now that we're at 62, uh, I guess the next goal has to be about 82 or something like that. We're gonna work hard to continue to grow the reputation of our very strong departments. We're going to double our annual research expenditures in the next five years. We're going to increase graduate student enrollment from about 6,700 to over 8,000 graduate students with an emphasis on doctoral student growth. We're going to increase the total number of degrees that we award every year to 9,000 from a base this year of, depending on how you count, about 8,500. And that's going to add, uh, those numbers are going to depend heavily on our retention rates and our ability to move students quickly through our programs in an effective way for them and for uh, their, to limit their debt. We need to increase our annual cash gifts, not total gifts, to about $23 million a year. And so, as I scan this audience, I think, this isn't too hard, 23 people, a million dollars each, we ought to get there really fast. Uh, and I thank you for your help in advance. Uh, we also need to launch two new programs uh, that I believe will have a big effect. The first we call Career Connect. It was part of our accreditation process, but something the faculty are embracing and this, our staff and advisors are embracing well. This project aims to give students internships, research opportunities, and very significantly 
deepen their ability to develop as professionals with portfolios to accompany them upon graduation. We think in the next five years, at least 50% of our students should be certified through this program, and I believe more will participate once they see the value of it. So this is an institution-wide commitment that we've already made. We also need to engage at least half, if not more, of our faculty and staff in leadership and change management and team building training. Uh, this will be important for us to work more effectively. And you're gonna see some specific ideas around this that came up out of the planning implementation workshop that I think are pretty exciting. Well, these goals are focused squarely on our students and our reputation. So let's be clear, we always keep our priorities straight. We're going to improve the reputation of the institution and improve our research and use that research to make sure that our students are getting a fantastic educational experience. So are we closing the gaps between our peers and trying to achieve those goals? Here's a few interesting tidbits. Since the fall of 2014, our revenues have grown by $95 million. 41 of that, or 43%, has been invested in academics, and we expect to continue that trend to continue to grow and build and serve our students. We uh, grew our research expenditures last year by a relatively modest $2 million, but you're going to see that based off the number of faculty we had, this is a fairly significant achievement. And as we grow our faculty numbers and hire more high-impact faculty, we expect to see acceleration of this uh, number, especially as we begin writing more collaborative grants. Our total gift commitments rose, uh, and this is total gift commitments, not cash gifts, from about 23 to 26 million, making it our second best gifting year ever. And within there, embedded in those numbers, were 6.7 million for new endowments, and endowments are the lifeblood of building the margin of excellence in institutions. Endowments help to create endowed chairs, which attract top quality faculty and provide scholarships so that students can do research. And this was one of the largest uh, number of endowments that we've seen in any given academic year. We also were blanked out in Texas research funds, matching funds from the state in FY13 and 14. We received zero dollars while our competition was scrambling herd. We have since upped that. Now when we receive gifts, particularly gifts that foster and nurture our research environment, like the generous gift Jim McNatt gave to our logistics program last year, we are ga gaining access to TRIP funding. And this year, uh, we should receive approximately five million dollars, uh, part of which was gathered last year, part of which will be uh, claimed here in the next few weeks. So we're doing much better at competing on a statewide basis for Texas matching funds. Now I have a few graphs because sometimes the trends don't look clear when you just use one word bullet points. So let's take a look at our enrollment. You can see that the growth of enrollment has been fairly steady. We lost a bit of ground in 2014, but since then we've really picked up steam and we now are ready to breach, breach the 38,000 barrier. Our graduate enrollment shows a similar but exaggerated trend, a loss of enrollment, and this is due primarily to a program in which uh, public schools in Texas stopped offering the incentives for higher education, doctoral students, and master's students to come back to the university. However, the College of Education has recovered a lot of that ground, and they're doing really well now, and you can see that we're beginning to grow our graduate student population again. That's the graph in the uh, upper right corner. FTIC headcount, first time incoming class, freshmen. And you can see that the growth in our freshman class is strong, and I will submit to you that the best indicator of reputation is your freshman class. As our reputation improves, more and more students make UNT their first choice. And our new transfer students, again, you can see the trend that I'm talking about. We had a great year. We've done fantastically uh, between student affairs, our academic affairs, and our vice president for enrollment. Uh, Finley and Shannon and Elizabeth have done wonderfully in writing articulation agreements to help ease the path for students to transfer to this university. However, 
uh, on a Texas-wide basis, enrollment in community colleges is declining. It declined last year. And our five major feeder institutions have declining enrollment. And you can see that we've started to tail off, and we're going to have to work even harder to make sure that transfer students view UNT as a friendly place to get a degree in a timely fashion and to get a high-quality degree that will lead to a job. Our retention and graduation rates are the most heartening numbers that I've seen this entire year. Now, some of you probably aren't extremely excited about words like retention and graduation, but if you were a student or a parent here, you would be. Our retention for our first-year students has risen, on average, a point a year for the last four years. That's great progress. Even more amazing, is that our six-year graduation rate numbers have risen by one percentage point a year. So we're really closing those gaps between us and the competition very quickly. And I think in many cases, we're surpassing some of the fine schools that you saw on that list. Our new uh, six-year graduation rate is about 53, 54% and we expect that rate to continue to accelerate. That's due to the amazing effort of our advisors and our uh, folks in student affairs who are actually working with every student who says they may leave the university and helping them to find their path back into the academic mainstream and to graduate on time. And of course, if we improve our six-year graduation rate, you're going to expect to see an en enhancement of the total number of degrees we uh, have awarded. Uh, this year, and, and again, I'll say these are definitions that are a little squirrely because they come from the federal government, but this year we believe we'll be at about 85 or 8,600 students graduating uh, by our current counts, and that will represent an increase of about 400 students from last year. I think we're on the right track, and we're doing what the state of Texas needs uh, in order to have a prosperous future. Now, let's look at a very serious slide. This is our faculty hires, the one that looks like a ski slope. Um, when I got here, we were in some budgetary distress. We did what we had to do to be sure that we could cover our contingent liabilities in that time. We had to save some money. We froze positions, we cut our budget in order to make sure that we were solid financially. And I won't repeat the woes that we had during that period of time, but when you cut budget in the fall of 14, its impact on uh, faculty hires isn't felt until the next year because we lost some positions and we didn't have a big hiring year. Last year, as we came out of the woods and our budget grew, we opened up a number of searches. We had 81 hires, and you can see the impact of that on our unofficial faculty count for this year. We're up now to uh, what may be an all-time high, and we need to continue to keep growing the lines uh, that we have, and we'll expect to accelerate that this year. Paralleling, to some extent, the number of faculty that we have is our grant output. It fell, leveled out, and now has increased. And I'll point out that that increase that we see is with the lower faculty base. So as we add more faculty, we can expect to see an acceleration of this. So for anyone who doesn't think revenues are critical to the success of an institution, please look carefully at these slides. Our ability to commit new funds, to expand lines, and to serve our students, and to grow our research programs is utterly critical to our success. So how are we going to address these goals going forward? Well, we're going to continue to hire faculty, both at the assistant professor level and high-impact hires. We're continuing to expand our research groups. In fact, we're going to add two new research groups. I know Kristen Farmer is here, who has launched for us the Kristen Farmer Autism Center, uh, a wonderful research tool. We just had a blue ribbon panel come into town of five of the most prominent nationally known autism spectrum disorders researchers in the country. They were very impressed with the group here. They felt we needed a little bit of organization and some leadership, and that we would be able to put a, a very strong program together. In fact, they said we ought to be able to build the strongest program for ASD research in the state in a very short period of time. And better yet, 
they want to network with us, they want to help, they want to interact with us in research. So we're very excited about launching this particular program, and we think it will not only have a big effect on our educational programs and our granting, but it'll have an effect on the community around us where we have deep needs to make sure that we're taking care of children with early diagnostics and intervention so that we can help our region. We also are going to organize a group around big data. We have a lot of individual faculty who are working on the big data mining projects of the day. We're not terribly organized in this area, and it's another commitment that is coming out of the VP for Research Office, and I think this is going to be very important, both educationally as well as in terms of our research activities, with a new cyber lab, by the way, opening out in Frisco, which we're very excited about, for cybersecurity, which is indirectly a part of big data analysis. We're building new research space for biomedical engineering program, our newest and fastest growing program. Uh, by the way, one that is exceedingly gender diverse for engineering. Uh, we are opening up our science research building this spring. Both of these projects will add desperately needed square footage to our wet lab research capabilities and help us to grow our grant funding. We're going to fund 100 new positions for doctoral students this year dedicated to increasing our doctoral student production, and the competition is on. Uh, different departments are already submitting proposals, and I think it's a very healthy thing for this university to compete for resources to see who can do the best with what we give them. We're going to open our Collab Lab, the new innovation space, pop-up restaurants, which I think is exciting that our students run and operate and advertise. We'll have the art part of our art program and maker spaces in it. We'll be having hackathons and a number of entrepreneurial and innovation building events for students, faculty, staff, and even the community. So once we launch, probably around next summer, uh, you can look forward to a really good, hot place for innovation to be occurring in Denton County. Finally, yeah, I had to talk about it. <laughs> Transportation and parking. I thought maybe I could just kind of skate by this slide, but we've had a couple complaints about parking this year. Uh, and I guess it's always one of the big problems on any campus. And I know it doesn't help when I say the parking's better here than any place I've ever been, because for all of you, it feels a little worse this year. Part of the reason for that is because we had to remove some parking spaces due to different construction projects on campus. So the good news is we're renovating and building, we're growing Greek Row, we're building a central pathway, we're putting up new buildings. Part of the problem is that we had a few rough starts in how we organized it. And I think it's better to say we didn't do it as well as we could and we're dedicated to fixing it. But the underlying plan is sound. We brought in one of the top uh, parking and university parking and transportation groups in the world. They helped us to develop a plan. And what they said was really pretty simple. They said, as you get bigger, you're going to run out of parking. And building more parking is really expensive. So you need to get people to change their behavior. Hence, the large number of tweets I receive every day. Uh, people aren't fond of changing their behavior, but we need more of our students and faculty and staff to be taking our transportation options. We need to make those options more palatable. We also said, they also said, you haven't priced your parking right. It's really cheap everywhere. Make parking towards the core expensive and create very inexpensive remote parking. We did that. It wasn't the most popular thing we ever did. Uh, I'm not sure we've leveled everything quite right yet, but we're working on it. We now have very inexpensive remote parking at $125 a year. That's amazing. <coughs> Off behind Apogee and Victory Hall. And that lot sits quite empty. Students would rather fight for parking spaces or get tickets on campus than park in remote parking where we're shuttling students and have offered them an e-ride option for free. They get on their cell phone, they tell people they need a ride, we pick them up in seven to 10 minutes, drive them where they need to go. It's a pretty awesome deal. We also need to increase bike share programs, skateboarding on campus, yes, even skateboarding, 
and we're going to offer zip cars, cars you can rent by the hour. More importantly, we've discovered that convenience really drives our market. We've had students who said, well, you know, I'd rather park and get a ticket and be close to class, because, hey, my parents are paying for the ticket. Remember that, parents. Um, so instead of having them have to have that choice, why don't we create some more expensive pay-by-the-hour parking lots, but let's make it real convenient. They can run in, grab a spot, pay on their iPhone in a pay-by-phone lot. If they stay a little extra, they can re-up on the iPhone. And if you want convenience, you can pay for convenience. But the ultimate answer is going to be, we do need some more parking. And uh, our VP for Finance and Administration, Bob Brown, and I uh, pull our hair out over it, and you can tell it's had a bad effect on both of us. <laughs> so what we're doing right now is we're trying to figure out maybe when Fouts Field goes down, do we put in some flat surface parking? And, and let me give you this quick fact. Flat surface parking, about 1,200 bucks a space. Structured parking, about $12,000 a space. Which bill would you rather pay? Uh, w if we can find more flat surface parking, great. And if we don't have immediate need for the land, that's wonderful. But at some point, we'll probably have to put that land in play and other solutions will need to apply. But we are working on it. The plan is good. We just have some rough spots with the execution and we're going to get them worked out. And T. Daly, I hope you appreciated that. We also, uh, we also need to break ground on our new visual arts and design building. This is a very exciting project. We're going to launch a new program in integrated resort management with, uh, in partnership with North Central Texas College. I think this is gonna be a really great program. It can help serve uh, the resort community in Oklahoma where they've already pledged scholarship support for students and we're going to do it at a very uh, fair cost. Uh, so we're excited about this and we think it'll be a popular program, particularly because we'll be co-located on the Gainesville NCTC campus. We're going to complete our data projects, and I can't emphasize enough how much we need access to very well-defined and high-quality data. Once that gets done, it's going to open the door up for us to use higher-ed big data. And the most impressive thing I've seen in recent years is the use of predictive analytics. There's a number of organizations who uh, can help us develop those services, but basically using the data on our students and how their class going rates are in composite and even broken down to the individual level. We can make effective interventions that give us early warning, that help promote our students' success, that keep them in school and keep them graduating in a timely fashion. So this is going to be a major innovation. And by the way, the institutions that have already started to employ this have seen tremendous gains in retention. So we're looking for the same type of impact once our IT data structures are solid. Uh, we're going to renovate our Sage Hall to become a one-stop academic success center. It'll take three years. It'll be a Florida time. Uh, we're doing this out of our own funds, but we're better to have an academic success center in something that's name is Sage. And so we will be committing to supporting our students directly with career advice, with tutoring, and with other types of interventions should they need help and support. We'll be building a new residence hall and a new dining hall to accommodate our growing freshman classes. And along with that, we're going to build a beautiful new UNT Visitor Center, which coincidentally will be located right next to the new dining hall and the new residence hall, because of course they all look like that, don't they? Um, as we build these, they'll help to welcome people to our campus and provide them a wonderful campus visit experience, but they'll also take a little bit of pressure off the renovation cycles for some of our other properties so that we can make sure all of our uh, residence halls are kept up to snuff and are comfortable and are modernized. We're planning a new classroom building that'll be funded from internal sources, and we're going to provide coaching and change management leadership support for chairs and faculty who want it this year. So this is going to be a major innovation. We expect it to have a big impact on us. Now, I hear the sharks. During our planning implementation workshop, we decided that we would 
try to unleash the creative potential of the people in the room. We had 120 participants, students, faculty, staff, uh, and uh, administration. And we challenged them to come up with ideas that would help us meet our goals, to improve our research and reputation, to improve student success, and to build a culture that was more nimble. And we had 12 different presentations to the Shark Tank, which consisted of the cabinet, and I allowed the cabinet to not only, uh, the, the participants voted their top three favorite projects, but the cabinet, out of their own funds, get to sponsor other projects just like Shark Tank on TV. And here's the good news. I did not know how this would turn out. I was a little worried about pie-in-the-sky proposals. But that didn't happen. We got really deep, thoughtful proposals that made sense and would pencil and people approached it the right way. And so here's some highlights from some of what we found in the Shark Tank. Uh, one group says, let's expand our high demand online majors uh, at the master's level and offer them all over the place. Well, this is a matter of convenience for many returning students. They don't have the time to commute to a campus. We know now that we have the technology to offer a high quality program, especially to able learners. And if we do that, we can reinvest the profits in building our doctoral program and our graduate on-campus graduate student strengths. Similarly, we can create five-year master's programs where you get your bachelor's and your master's in one pass, which will significantly boost our master's numbers. And again, generating revenues that can be used to reinvest in building our graduate programs. Great ideas. We're gonna foster faculty collaboration in spaces like Avesta and the Collab Lab, building an ersatz faculty club, if you will, fa excuse me, faculty and staff club, and uh, doing it in space that's currently dormant uh, in the evening hours, which will help to generate more revenues for our student union building. It's a good idea. And we need places where we can get together and talk and innovate. We're also going to help uh, our faculty become student success coaches. In fact, we'll be offering out of the President's Office a Coach of the Year Award. And if you wonder about Coaches of the Year, you say, well, what does that mean? Let me give you an example. Uh, one of our chemists is named Bill Ackery. He is a remarkably talented researcher. He brings a number of undergraduate students into his lab, sometimes even TAMS students into his lab. They work with him. When they get out of here, he places them in some of the most prestigious institutions in the country. Most recently, in Yale and in Stanford, students out of his lab have basically won the top research honors for graduate students. And that's the kind of mentorship and coaching that we hope to see from our faculty. I'm very proud of what he's done, but it's just a sample of the caring and the mentoring that goes on at this university. We also had a number of uh, suggestions for building mobile apps and websites to help connect people for research, for innovation, and for student success, and to build a feeling of engagement on the campus. So many great uh, ideas that we're going to actually build a an app integration team so that we don't uh, overwhelm ourselves with new product and that we organize our approaches to this quite well. We also critically need to allocate research space better. And there was a request uh, out of one of the tables to build a group that maximized our research dollar generation and our reputation by making sure that all of our research space was being put to its highest call and purpose. And this will be a project that Tom and a number of other individuals are working on this year. Uh, we're going to also create faculty and staff teams to remove barriers, uh, internal barriers to research. We've just discovered some and we've managed to clear those barriers, but we're going to have to build basically a kind of a rapid response team every time we find that we have policies that are getting in, in the way of building our reputation or serving our students. And it turns out there's a number of those, so we're gonna work on it, and in companionship with that, uh, one of our tables uh, led uh, by Terry Polin and Sugao were suggesting that we build lean process in this institution. If you haven't heard of lean process, it means 
Find out what you really care about and build a process that gets you there quickly without a lot of unnecessary bureaucratic hoops to jump through. Toyota's doing this. In fact, some of our faculty are working with Toyota right now. There's others who can help. But if we can re-engineer how we work, not just in this campus, but how we work with our system colleagues who support us, uh, lean process uh, implementation could go a long ways towards helping us to use our energy more effectively. So these are some of the ideas that the Shark Tank produced. I'm very proud of them. And as we near the end of our talk, I think it's time for us to know that it's going to be a really busy and productive year, but let's catch our breath and remember why we're here. I chose UNT because it has an amazing music college and I really like the atmosphere of Denton. I think it's really cool and it's really pretty here. Um, because my parents went there and I was inspired. And it was a great college to go to. A lot of what I like about this campus is the faculty and the students. Everyone seems really inviting and welcoming, so I, I really do feel like I'm joining a part of a community. Um, it was a familiar place, and when I got here, I just felt safer and more at home, so it was a good choice for me for what I wanted to do. What's your dream? My dream right now is to get a job in uh, computer science and just really enjoy the work I'm doing and be challenged every day by it. It's something that fulfills me and just I'm excited about it. What I hope to get from my education at UNC is really just experience and knowledge that will help me in the future. I want to be able to start a job right away as soon as I graduate and then know what I'm doing there and uh, be able to succeed well and move up quickly. Basically I'm just hoping to kind of I guess get a better understanding of what I'm supposed to do and like what my place in the world is because I mean that's kind of what college is supposed to be about, right? Well, since it is my last year being here at UNT, I hope that whatever I learn here at this institution, I'll be able to take it out and apply it to the wor real world and whatnot out there. You know, I've learned so much in these past three to four years. I hope that like whatever I've learned, like it could be beneficial to other people that I influence or I can help out in the future. At UNT, I got very good exposure in writing as well as the courses were so good that my fundamentals are strong and I'll be confident when I face the world or if I go out and become academician and face my students. I'm ready to get, you know, start college and, you know, just kind of find my own footing. I prepped her for it, so I'm good. So I'm, I'm proud of her, but I'm scared, but I know she can do it, I'm sorry. I didn't think it was going to fall apart, but yeah. <laughs> um, my dreams are definitely to obviously have a great job once I get out of here. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to learning a lot. I've met a lot of great people, very welcoming, um, definitely wanting to see me succeed, which is something that I was really looking for when I was looking into a university for my graduate program. I hope to get like a lot of experience. She's gonna go far above anything any of us have ever done. She's going to just soar. I know she will. She's gonna accomplish everything she wants to. I hope that from my education at UNT I find my sense of purpose and my independence and my ability to think on my own and be an adult when I get out into the real world. Well, if that doesn't put a smile on your face, nothing will. That's why we're here. And if we're going to make all those dreams come true, we all need to commit. You as a community, our faculty, our staff, our students, we're all working for the same thing. In fact, we have 10 divisions. We have 12 colleges. We have 58 academic departments and over 3,900 employees. But we are one team united by one purpose, and that's to empower our students to make their dreams come true. Thank you all very much. Now, there's going to be, oops, they've turned me off. There's supposed to be a reception following this, and 
I want you to, as you leave, please check out the UNT Impact Report and thank all of you for what you do. Please join us in the lobby, and if you have questions, I'll be available. You can ask out there. And have a great afternoon. Let's have a great year.